I know this is going to sound crazy, but I'm pretty sure I've seen this technology somewhere before. Any ideas now? Well, today I'm announcing the imminent launch of the new Philips Hearlink 50 hearing aids. So stick around to learn about their new features, when you can get your hands on them, plus if they're suitable for you and your hearing loss. One of the world's largest hearing aid manufacturers, the DeMont Group, who are well known for brands such as Oticon, Bernafon, and Sonic hearing aids, recently announced the release of the new Oticon Intent. This new hearing aid technology is on a brand new chip and is fully loaded with new technology. And this includes the likes of artificial intelligence, LE audio Bluetooth, motion sensors, and a ton of new features over and above their previous hearing aids, the Oticon Reels. Now, those of you out there with a keen eye may well have noticed something ever so slightly similar between the subject of today's video, the Philips Hearlink 50, and the Oticon Intent. And that's because they share the same physical appearance and also some of the same technological developments inside. And I imagine that a fair number of you today will have been drawn to this video knowing that Costco US has a relationship with DeMont, selling their Philips branded hearing aids. In fact, in a recent poll that I put out there on the Hearing Tracker YouTube channel, around 25% of you watching this channel purchased your hearing aids from Costco, which means that it's likely that you'll be wearing either the Jabra Enhanced Pro 20s or the Philips 9030 or 9040 family of hearing aids, and are probably keen on knowing if or indeed when the Hearlink 9050s will be coming to Costco. Well, stick around as I'll share with you the details on when I think they're coming to Costco later on in today's video. Out of curiosity, I would love to know where you purchase your current set of hearing aids. Yes, you watching today. So was it at Costco? Was it at an independent audiology practice? Or perhaps it was at a chain such as Belltone or Connect Hearing? Or maybe via your ENT or the VA? Let me know in the comments beneath this video. Now the Hearlink 50s supersede the Hearlink 40 family of hearing aids, which consists of a wide range of hearing aids from the Hearlink Minirite TR, which is the receiver and canal rechargeable version with a built-in telecoil, the Minirite T, which uses a 312 disposable battery that needs changing roughly once every five to 10 days, their Minirite, which is their smallest receiver and canal disposable battery hearing aid, but is missing the telecoil, and then we have their behind the ear hearing aids, the Mini BTE TR, which is Philips rechargeable BTE, and the Mini BTE T, which again uses a size 312 battery. And then finally, Philips have their BTE PP, which is their power behind the ear hearing aid. So let's you and I cover a couple of different things together today. Firstly, I'll run through this brand new Philips hearing aid design, and then we'll take a good look at what's going on inside this hearing aid technology. Now, before I start, I just need to put a warning out there so that you don't make the same mistake that I did when you start researching this hearing aid. You have to be very careful when researching the Philips 9050 hearing aids, as at first glance, one could argue that they almost look like an iron. I experienced mass confusion when reviewing the features to find steam boosts, detachable water tanks, and a record-breaking 7.5 bars of pressure only to realize that these hearing aids share their same model numbers with other tech from Philips. So one of my first pleas today goes out to the Philips marketing department. Please work harder on your product names. So looking at the hearing aid version of the Hearlink 50 series, you'll see that there have indeed been some physical changes compared with the Hearlink 40 here on the left. The new design is indeed a little shorter, which I'm sure most of you will welcome if discretion is important to you. However, at the same time, it is also a fraction bulkier. Now, this does concern me a little about how they'll feel when sat on your ear, especially if they're competing for space with anybody wearing glasses. It is interesting that they've chosen a different approach to all other hearing aid manufacturers who have developed longer and narrower hearing aids, such as the new Widex SmartRick, the Signia Stiletto, and then the Phonak Slim whereas the DeMont group seem to have gone with this shorter and fatter style. You'll notice in the redesign that Philips have also replaced the rocker switch with a single push button. I personally think that this is a bit of a mistake as patients do generally tend to like a rocker switch due to its flexibility. So for me, it's a little bit of a step backwards. 
And whilst the buttons on hearing aids aren't as important as they used to be, because now everything can be done on the app, there are still plenty of my patients that like the flexibility to be able to use both. As far as the colors go, Philips have yet to publish any information on the colors available. However, if they're anything like the 40 series, it's likely that we'll see six different colors from beige, black, brown, dark gray, gray, and taupe. All the colors are matted nowadays, so they don't tend to catch the light. And normally patients tend to opt for a color that matches their hair for maximum discretion. So that's the physical developments taken care of, which in my opinion is indeed a worthwhile change as this model of hearing aid from Philips has looked the same for a couple of generations now. However, if we start to look at what's going on inside these hearing aids, this is where it gets even more interesting. As far as suitability goes, these images show the fitting ranges for the Philips Hearlink 50. So if your hearing loss falls within this shaded area, then they're technically suitable for you with the receivers being interchangeable between either a 60, 85, 100, or 105 decibel power level. Therefore, if you have either a mild, moderate, severe, or profound hearing loss, they can be adapted to suit your needs, which is something that your audiologist will recommend for you depending on your specific hearing test results. As with all manufacturers of hearing aids, these are also available in various technology levels from the 9050s, 7050s, 5050s, and the 3050s, with the former being the most advanced of all of them. Now, yes, the chip in these hearing aids is brand new, and yes, these hearing aids do have the same features that we saw in the Hearlink 40s, but Philips have built on those as a foundation and added to them, starting with their SoundMap 3 feature. In the Healing 40s, we saw the introduction of SoundMap 2 Plus, which is essentially the brain of these hearing aids, aiming at controlling background noise with the assistance of artificial intelligence. Philips are promising that SoundMap 3 will provide their best ever speech understanding in background noise, with artificial intelligence beginning to dominate the hearing aid space now as we're seeing various hearing aid manufacturers using it. SoundMap as a feature in itself has evolved over the last few generations with a few key developments. First of all, starting with extending the number of frequency bands from 16 to 24. Now, from your perspective, more frequency bands allows for an improvement in speech separation from noise, which in turn results in a greater noise reduction across frequency bands to efficiently clean speech signals in noise, utilizing their artificial intelligence noise reduction system. The next addition was their Sound Protect feature, which was introduced into the Healing 9040s and preserves speech when it's in the presence of wind, handling, and transient noise. And then finally, the key development within SoundMap 3, so from today's hearing aids, is Sound Guide, which is all possible due to the new embedded accelerometers built within these hearing aids, which not only detect head movements by measuring changes in velocity over time, but also even understands whether the speed of movement is brief or constant. What is this? Now, if you're wondering why on earth your hearing aids may want to measure the movement of your head, Philips aren't the first company to introduce accelerometers into their hearing aids. In fact, they're actually pretty late to the party. So following the likes of ReSound, Starkey, Phonak, and of course now Oticon. And as a result, this sound guide feature is one of my favorite new pieces of technology built into these hearing aids. SoundGuide not only monitors your environment like previous Philips hearing aids, but also utilizes the information from these accelerometers and analyzes both your head and body movement. Philips are stating that this information is then fed into the automated directionality and artificial intelligence noise reduction systems, producing and delivering the optimal sound based on your specific listening situations. Now, whilst this does sound a little bit complicated, Ultimately, from your point of view, it should mean that these hearing aids will improve your hearing in more complicated listening situations, such as busy restaurants, for example. They are some pretty wild claims coming from Philips, so let's hope that it works. As far as connectivity goes, Philips have also completely overhauled how their hearing aid tech interacts with other technology. And their SoundTie 3 feature refers to the Hearlink 50's ability to connect with either Android or iOS smartphones, allowing for the streaming of either phone calls or media, such as music, the radio, or podcasts, directly from your phone to your hearing aids. This essentially allows them to act as a wireless set of headphones, but of course, they're way better than that. 
because they also take into account your hearing loss too, giving you the appropriate sound to compensate for your individual and specific hearing loss. Now, this in itself isn't actually anything new. However, the big change comes with the introduction of LE Audio. For those of you that haven't come across LE Audio, it's a brand new Bluetooth protocol, not limited to hearing aids, but in my opinion, is going to change the face of the entire planet when it comes to hearing in public places and just general wireless connectivity. In the future, you'll be able to walk into concert halls, conferences, train stations and lectures, and the sound of whoever is speaking will be directly sent to both of your hearing aids, all with the click of a button. I happen to know that all hearing aid manufacturers are working together to have this installed in their up and coming hearing aids. And now from today's update, this means that both ReSound, Signia, Oticon and Philips will now give you access to LE Audio on their latest technology. In my opinion, this means that in the next few years, we'll start to see AuraCast Audio replace the century old loop systems built into public venues, which is actually regulation now and will allow for multiple hearing aid users to simultaneously connect to audio in those public spaces. All with an improvement in sound quality and significantly lower battery consumption. Now, there is a downside, and that's that at the moment, this is only useful when they've started to install these transmitters, and it's not really common practice yet. So I do think that it will be quite some time before we start to see this tech taking off. Now, moving on to their rechargeability updates, we've recently seen some big advances from the likes of Signia, Widex, and Starkey with their rechargeability, with battery capacities increasing to over 30 hours on a single charge. And whilst Philips have made improvements to their rechargeability, they've taken a slightly different approach now. By increasing the size of their battery, a single charge will now only take two hours rather than the three that we've seen in previous technology from them. And if you fall asleep on the sofa one night and forget to put them on charge, the next morning you can supercharge them for 15 minutes, which will give you four hours of usage. Or if you can make that 30 minutes, they'll last for eight hours in total. And also with this battery development, Philips are pretty confident that there should be an improvement in their longevity too, with the batteries in these hearing aids lasting up to four to five years. Now, of course, the other big question that pops into my head is why have they not bought out a disposable battery version? Phonak made the same mistake with their Lumity hearing aids and have only recently bought out the 312 disposable battery version. According to a recent Hearing Tracker YouTube poll, around 33% of hearing aid users prefer disposable batteries over rechargeable hearing aids. So my concern is Philips have potentially alienated a third of the people watching this video now. Now, I do indeed have my suspicions as to why this may be, and it, it's actually pretty concerning. Phonak also use motion sensors in their hearing aids, but they're only available in the rechargeable version due to the battery power that's needed to get this technology to work. If this new Philips technology is the same, and their major development in these hearing aids is the sound guide feature, which uses those accelerometers, does that potentially mean that this feature will be stripped away from a disposable version of the Healink 50 series? I'll keep you posted on this subject as soon as they start to roll out the rest of the family of these hearing aids, and I know a little bit more information. I would love to know in the comments in this video, would that stop you from buying them? Are you personally a disposable hearing aid battery user or do you use rechargeable batteries? Now for the information that you've all been waiting for. Will, and more importantly, when will these hearing aids be available in Costco? Well, if history is anything to go by, the Oticon Mall was released in January 2021, and its Philips counterpart arrived in Costco later on that year. Then we saw the release of the Oticon Real in March 2023, followed by the release of the Philips 9040 into Costco in April 2023. So if the DeMont group continue along the same trend, having seen the release of the Oticon intent on the 27th of February this year, 2024, it's possible that the Philips Healing 9050s will be hitting Costco shelves within the next few weeks. As soon as I know any more, you'll be the first to find out. So subscribe to stay updated. Now, if you're interested in knowing exactly how similar these hearing aids are to DeMont's other release, the Oticon Intense, then you have to watch this video.